Greetings, everyone. I'm Patrick Fizu with NC State University, and today we're going to be focusing in on calcium plant nutrition and diagnostics. So there's a lot of reasons why calcium is important. It's critical in cell wall development and can result in growing tip or flower abortion under severe cases. And uptake is highly influenced by your environmental conditions, meaning that even if you're supplying it, your environmental conditions can lower that transpiration rate and result in a calcium deficiency, which we'll kind of walk through today on some of those concerns. First, we kind of need to start off with uh, sources of calcium. There's going to be two main sources with your irrigation water and fertilizers. So just like magnesium, your irrigation water can contain calcium carbonate and can prevent uh, can be prevalent in many of the upper Midwest um, regions, uh, especially when you're over limestone. Us here in the southeast, we have very limited alkalinity, but conducting routine water testing to determine that calcium carbonate concentrations periodically throughout the year to determine that variation is going to help you understand how much calcium you need to be supplying to achieve optimal calcium fertility rates. The other source of calcium is going to be your fertilizer. So with this, it would be a CalMag solution. A lot of your uh, closer to neutral or basic fertilizers, this is going to be where uh, you see a CalMag. Um, it's often paired with something. Uh, so in this case, it's often going to be calcium nitrate or calcium chloride. It can be supplied through regular uh, fertilizer applications, uh, through irrigation, or through foliar applications as needed, such as on a poinsettia. So there's a lot of varieties and ways of applying this your calcium, but ensuring that you're either getting it through that alkaline water or through your fertilizer is very important for your plant's growth. So calcium uptake and how is the plant incorporating it? Calcium is a non-mobile element. That meaning the can't, plant cannot take it from its reserves in the lower portions of the plant and move it to where it's needed. It has to have adequate at the point that that cell is expanding. And it's moved through mass flow. So in that uh, root zone, you have your fertilizer and your calcium there. And as the plant transpires, you're essentially creating that draw and it's drawing these nutrients into the plant. Now, the key thing is that it must be transpiring for calcium to be taken up, meaning that if you get in cold conditions or cloudy days or high humidity, where that plant's not going to be transpiring, we're not going to see the calcium uptake. And that's where a lot of your problems can occur. So calcium deficiency, what does it look like? Calcium occurs on the new developing portions of the plant. So think those new leaves first expanding, uh, fruit, or in that flower, uh, flower tip uh, occurring. We also see this as uh, marginal necrosis or tip burn occurring on the new growth. Shown here, you see that a leaf edge, it's crinkling, and it's not fully expanding. It's kind of our cue. But that lower foliage looks nice and healthy. It's only on that new developing portion. So we see this a lot in propagation. Too much mist or high humidity can prevent that transpiration. So even if it's being supplied through uh, fertilizer applications, we need to be sure that our environment's matching plant uptake. So uh, propagation, mind the mist and kind of dialing it back to prevent that tip abortion is critical to promoting uh, calcium uptake and transpiration uh, for those cells to develop. And then diagnosing uh, calcium deficiency. Uh, foliar tissue analysis is an option, but it's going to be reported as a percent. So looking at a concentration, uh, it's going to be very hard to diagnose since you have a smaller leaf, you have a smaller volume that we're trying to uh, see a lower decrease in, even though there's a lower uh, total amount in terms of a concentration, it can be very difficult. Um, you're going to want to sample the most recently matured leaves. Um, and you may result in seeing some sufficiency, but understanding the symptoms of what's occurring, kind of uh, that you will see stunting occurring, which can throw it off, is important. So calcium fertility management. Water quality testing is the biggest. Determine what calcium concentrations are not supplied through irrigation water. And note that not all fertilizers supply calcium, such as the 201020. If you're not supplying it through irrigation water, you're not supplying it through your fertilizer, you're going to run into problems and you need to consider a CalMag. Foliar applications of calcium chloride are an option. 200 to 400 part per million on a poinsettia is recommended. And you want, when doing a calcium chloride uh, fl a foliar application, we need to be using technical grade uh, uh, calcium chloride 
to avoid impurities that can harm the crop. And then maintaining environmental conditions that are favorable favorable for calcium uptake. So in promoting plant transpiration to draw it into that new foliage is crucial. Now, looking at the mimics, what things can we confuse calcium deficiency for? The highest thing that we see is boron. It's also in that new mature growth. However, the big distinction here is that that leaf is going to feel slightly thicker. You'll, you'll see that leaf edge burn and kind of that stippling, but feeling that foliage, it's going to be thicker and brittle. Conducting tissue analysis to distinguish between the two is kind of where we uh, utilize that foliar tissue analysis. Uh, also, phytotoxicity. Oftentimes, we see leaf margin puckering occurring, such as an ethophon application uh, shown here on geraniums. You'll see it in some very sensitive species, not all. And if this is the problem, you know your crop is good, but you just sprayed and you start to see this, think phytotoxicity. The plant should grow out of it in roughly two to three weeks, and then that new growth is going to look good. So it's understanding that time of application to when you're seeing the problem is very important to diagnosing if it's phytotoxicity or calcium uptake problem. Also, water relations, uh, plant dry down. This is very common in seedlings, especially in those small cell packs shown here on some zucchini where the plants dried down and we saw that leaf margin burn. It can mimic that calcium deficiency in terms of water relation. Now, once the plants are rehydrated, uh, and it's gonna, they will look fine. Uh, you will start still see the edge burn, but that new growth should look good. We're looking for that uniformity across the crop. If it's only a couple isolated plants in the center versus all of them. So, kind of, what did we learn, and what are our take homes today? Calcium can be supplied through a variety of ways, including your water, water soluble fertilizers, or a foliar application. Your environmental conditions uh, can significantly impact your calcium uptake, even if you're supplying it. Uh, and one of our big problems where we see is in vegetative propagation. So minding that mist, create your vapor pressure deficit to get that plant to transpire. A wide variety of problems can mimic calcium deficiency, but time occurrence and location can help you determine the cause. That there's a lot of resources on eGrow uh, as well for calcium diagnostics, and as well as a lot of mimics as well. That I like to say thank you for your time today.